to all those above me that watch over me, to all of you, my fave pair of peeps on this side of the veil, welcome. This is the Paranormal Ministry. I'm your host, Sean Whittington. I'm a seminarian in the United States Old Catholic Church, and I'm coming to you live from my haunted home, my very haunted home, where I live. And with my guest tonight, it might get active, but it's been quiet. So let's let's hope that uh, I don't have the same type of computer issues that I had last Friday. And if you tuned in last Friday for Morgan Daimler, she will be back in a couple of weeks. I've rescheduled her, but uh, I learned my lesson not to make fun of the elementals here on my property before a show. And then they just, my internet went haywire. So what do I want to tell you guys? Uh, I got a great guest tonight. I know that's why you all tuned in. I love her. I respect her. She's so cool. So excited to have her here. She's in the green room. I'll bring her right on. But let's first check the prayer urn. Ellie P. from Minnesota. I want to be baptized Catholic. Well, good for you. How should I proceed, and will you pray that I can accomplish this? Oh, my gosh, Ellie, that request is going to make me cry. Yes, of course. That is great news. Um, Yes, I will offer up a prayer for you for that. And here's my suggestion. Let's just keep it simple. Find the nearest Catholic church to you. Go there. Make an appointment to speak with one of the priests and talk to him. That has, like back in the day, you know, I was baptized as a baby, but I know other people that have later in life tried to become baptized, converted to Catholicism, and they had to jump through a few hoops, unfortunately. So you may have to go to catechism and do some other training prior to getting baptized. But uh, so do that for me. Um, go to a, your nearest Catholic church, talk to the priest. Having said that, though, to hold you over, find a really good non denominational Christian based church in your area that does full submersion in the holy waters, baptizing, and go there and uh, take some friends or family, make it a group thing, or just go by yourself, uh, make an appointment to go there, check out their service, and then afterwards uh, get dunked in the holy waters. And that baptism will hold you over until you work things out with the Catholic Church. But most definitely, I will offer a prayer up for you. I'm so excited for you. And please, after that happens, would you let me know so I can announce it? Okay, this is a good one. Name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, you are the Son of God. You resolve our problems and respond to our aspirations with unexpected fullness. As the Son sent to us by the Father, you are God, who comes to meet us and manifests for us the God whom we seek. You are the the revelation of God for us, the full, perfect and definitive revelation, God in person. In you, the God who is far off becomes the God who is near, the God with us, and the God who is one with us our companion of life's journey. You alone, O Lord, are the way, the truth, and the life, the Messiah, and the Son of the living God. And I offer this prayer up for Ellie. Amen. Okay. Good luck, Ellie. Let's check the Paranormal Ministry mailbag. Robert T. from Arkansas. I think I might have a ghost in my house. (laughs) Join the club. She appears as a nun. Oh, wow. I don't want to disturb her if she is indeed a nun. How can I be sure if it's not a trick? There have been a few really old churches that have closed down over the years close to me. You know, my discernment is telling me, Robert, that it could be the, the ghost of a nun. So, uh, but this is how you tell. 
the next time she appears to you in her apparition or however she appears to you, ask her, are you of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Uh, and if you'll know by the reaction, if uh, you're being tricked or not, but um, just let her do her thing. If it starts to become too uncomfortable for you and the family, um, then you can just talk to her and ask her to, you know, um, ask for your guardian angels to come down and escort this uh, a beautiful soul to where she needs to be. But uh, if you have a lot of old churches in your area, then especially if you've got some uh, church cemeteries there that perhaps she was uh, buried in, do some history. Call the county assessor in your area and research your home in the area. See if there's any uh, places where some of the priests and nuns were buried. Um, but good luck with that. But I think that's very cool. I think that's very cool. Okay, anything you want to know about my wife and I, our ministry work, go to our website, www.ghost-b-gone.biz. When you go there to visit, there's a lot of cool things to see, but remember, my wife and I don't charge for our ministry work, helping people with their paranormal issues. So, brothers and sisters, trust me, I know times are tough, but if you notice the donate button and you're able to do so, click on it and send the ministry in a small donation. I promise you it'll be appreciated from the bottom of our hearts, and trust me, we'll put it to good use. I'm also a certified spiritual advisor. If you're having issues of a spiritual nature not attached to the paranormal, there's a place on the website where you can make an appointment to speak with me. But don't leave the website without navigating over to the page called the WSE course slash book. On that page, you'll find cool things to buy if you go for that sort of stuff. All the proceeds go right into the ministry. But scroll down a little further on that page, you'll find my new haunted autobiography, God, Ghosts, and the Paranormal Ministry. And I quote, scariest book I ever published. That was Annette Munich, owner of Stellium Books, my publisher. But don't let that scare you off of purchasing a copy. If you haven't done your good deed for the day yet, part of the proceeds of every sale of every copy of my book goes to supportstjude.org. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, Nevada, and the ASPCA. So you get to help some of the neediest children on the planet and the animals, too. How cool is that? And it's a great time to pick up the first book because God Goes in the Paranormal Ministry 2, Chronicles of an American Exorcist, is ready to come out. So you get all caught up before you hopefully run out and get the second book. Scroll a little further down on that page. Um, oh, look, two ways to get the book real quick. And I want to warn you about something. You can get it a little less expensive at Amazon. If you buy it from the website, it leaves my office here, autographed, enclosed in a house blessing kit. And uh, I've had some people tell me about a particular apparition that has shown up in their home after they purchased my book and it arrived. But the book came from me, not Amazon. Uh, there is a picture of an, an entity that I've captured in that book. And some of people have seen that entity in their home. If that has happened to you, reach out to me. Tell me your story. Your story may end up in one of my books or end up a story on something else. You never know. So um, let me know. Um, scroll down a little bit further. You'll see the Worldwide Society of Exorcists, which I'm a founding member. I offer a 12-week online college-level course Introduction to Spiritual Warfare through the WSE. And this is the course for all you true warriors for Christ that feel a calling and a longing to want to have more knowledge when it comes to drawing your line in the sand, making a stand, circling the wagons, and putting up a good fight against God forbid true evil if it ever comes calling. That's the course for you. You can enroll at the website or um, you can call me first and talk to me a little bit about it before you make that type of commitment. But um, all my students that graduate get a stunning diploma, certificate of completion, suited for framing, along with some other very special blessed items that you can only get from yours truly. Most importantly, brothers and sisters, please keep all my former, current, and future students in your prayers. Okay, well, the reason why you all tuned in. I'm not going to get to all the things I want to talk to her about tonight. The show's not long enough, but I'm excited to have her. I just want her to have fun because I'm going to want her to come back 
like I said earlier, I love her. I respect her. I think she's cool. And uh, you guys are going to love her and respect her, too. Most of you already know who she is anyhow. New York Times best-selling author, Exorcist. Just a cool, cool lady. And I was embarrassed to even pitch my one lonely little book because she's written like 60 of them. Brothers and sisters, please welcome to the show the one and only Debbie, Debbie Vigay. Thank you so much, Sean. That was such a nice introduction. Love it. <laughs> it's from the heart, you know. Um, what do I want to say to you other than you look very pretty tonight? And I'm so grateful that you took an hour out of your busy Monday evening to uh, <laughs> to spend with me. Let me let me address the elephant in the room here. Like I said, I was embarrassed to even pitch my one little lonely book because do I okay? Be honest with me. Do I live under a rock? Where have I been? We I'm going to talk about how we met here in a minute, but until I started stalking you this past week. We're starting to prepare for the show. I didn't know. Where have I been? I didn't know that you were this New York Times bestselling author with 60 books. Where have I been? Do I, do I, do I need to get out more or what? You do need to get out more. But um, I, I also I have one of those names that's weird. So it kind of slips out of people's minds. You know, I blame my husband. He gave me a French last name no one can say or pronounce or remember how to spell it. Um, I was Debbie Reynolds before I got married. So, you know, <laughs> but, but no, um, yeah, I, I've got about somewhere over a million people have read my books, which oh, is awesome. That is and awesome. Do not feel bad about just being on your first book with the second <laughs> one coming out. Cause you, you've got time. You know? uh, I don't got much time. I was already 63. I don't got much time. I'm not young <laughs> like you. Hey, hey. Um, I, as October was my 20th anniversary of being a published writer. So in 20 years, I did 60 books. So in the next 20 years, you could do quite a number. I want you to also know, I think about you all the time. And no, not like that. Get your mind out of the gutter. Um, I'll tell you. <laughs> <It's> so bad. Because <laughs> on my desk here, it never leaves my desk. Oh, thank you. The beautiful little white pocket Bible that you gave me when we first met. And it's always right here on the, uh, you know. That makes me the, so uh, happy. On my office desk here. That was the and, weirdest uh, thing when I got those. Because really? Tell, tell me the found, story. I found them in a store. I saw them. And immediately there was this voice in my head saying, buy it. And I'm like, for what? And like, just buy them. Buy all of them. And I'm like, why? And, then, and I'm like, okay, fine. I will buy all of them. And then um, when we met, uh, it turned out I had the exact number I needed for everybody there. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. I am going to get into you. We'll, we'll address, now here's number two elephant in the room. We'll get it out of the way because I've been, people have been asking me all week about it. Um, and I got to be careful here, but we'll get into your writing after this. And then we'll get into rumor has it talk around the uh, psych ward water coolers that you're married to a doctor who thinks he's Indiana Jones. So <laughs> we'll talk about your soulmate because you and I couldn't do what we do without having a soulmate behind us. And we'll talk about your writing, but let's talk about how you and I first met. Um, it was on a project. Uh, and it took place in LA and uh, I met you the first time I went, I went out there twice, but I met you the first time when I went out there to work on the project. And um, you were one of the uh, total refreshing, welcoming, bright spots for me during that whole ordeal oh. and situation which uh, was a, a totally life changing once in a lifetime opportunity. I know uh, I'll go as far as to say that what you contributed was phenomenal. And I know that for, for whatever reasons, I don't know how all of that works in, you know, production companies and networks and all that. I don't know how that works, but they've, pushed your part back a little bit and they're really hoping for 
a season two in Knock on Wood, and <laughs> your story will be featured in that. So what I want, want you to do now, and if you talk for the rest of the hour, you've got my permission because I don't know what I'm doing anyhow. Nobody tunes in for me. They tune in for my guests. So this is what I want to ask you. How you, how that fell in your lap, what you thought of that whole, that whole situation that we were in. Uh, I, I, I had weird paranormal stuff happening to me in the hotel. I was seeing weird paranormal things that I didn't tell anybody about when we were in that church. Talk to me how about how that fell in your lap without getting, we can't mention network or name of show, but talk to me about how that fell in your lap, that how was... you felt about that whole experience and how you, you've got uh, Debbie Vigay Ministries, how you got into this um, kicking demon ass. <laughs> well, I'll start with how it fell into my lap. Um, it was uh, close to my birthday, actually. And uh, I got a, a phone call like, you know, a missed call, but they didn't leave a message, you know, and it was, and I don't pick up phone, you know, calls from people I don't know, you know, no text, no message. I'm like, whatever. But I actually looked it up and it looked like it belonged to like a, a casting company. And I'm like, well, that's really odd, but who knows who spoofs what. The next day I got a call from the same number and they actually left a message and they're like, and it was a, a, um, a casting director. And he said, oh my gosh, I'm, I need to talk to you and I need to talk to you today because my window is closing today and I think you're an exorcist. And I'm like, now there is an attention getting phone call. So <laughs> I called him back and he said, look, I've been spending two weeks trying to cast for this show. I'm looking for real life exorcists. Your name keeps coming up. And every time I go to look at your website or different things, I'm like, well, she's just a fiction writer. But he said, but every time I wander away, your name keeps coming back up. He said, Last night I did a deep dive and realized that in addition to fiction, you also do the exorcism stuff for real. And he's all, please, 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 will you, you know, talk to the people and, you know, consider being on the show? And I'm like, absolutely. You know, that sounds fascinating. So then it was, you know, interviewing with different people in the production company and telling them my stories and, uh, and scaring them a bit, which was, <laughs> it's, it's bad. As a writer, I really enjoy scaring people. You know, I like, I write dark fantasy and I write horror and I write thrillers. And if people are freaked out and can't sleep, I'm happy. As an exorcist, I have made it my job to take the scary out of it as much as possible because so many people don't do the things they need to do to get spiritually healthy, to get their house cleansed, to get the oppression away from them or whatever it is because they're too frightened. You know, so my goal when I go in is always to be like, this is a perfectly natural thing that happens. You know, it's you're not alone. This happens to you know, happens to more people than you think. And we're not going to freak out about it. We're going to laugh about it. We're going to make this as normal as possible so that you'll actually do what I tell you to do. Right. So it was like that really weird thing where I'm like, I'm glad you're scared on one hand. But at the same time, as far as my ministry goes, I don't want you to be frightened. So I felt bad because I, I was you know, I, I unintentionally freaked um, one of the people out at the production company. But I had so much fun actually on the shoot when we came out um, to LA to do it. And I got to meet Sean and everybody else. And that was hilarious because I've never gotten to really sit down and talk shop with other exorcists. And so the lunch times were my favorite part where we were just <laughs> swapping stories. And, you know, just it, it felt so good to me because I grew up in such isolation with this. And um, the other thing that was very funny to me was right before I flew out, the day before I flew out to LA, uh, I, was I was talking to God, I was driving, and he's like, don't, basically, you know, in, in a long, long series of words, what he said was don't get into a pissing contest with the other exorcists. And I'm like, he's like, don't try to out scare them, don't try to, you know, make, you know, bigger, better, more horrific stories. He said, I want you to, your job when you go out there is to minister to everybody you find, which I did, I think, you know, I, oh, yeah. what I, that's what I focused on. So when I wasn't on stage, I was, I talked to so many members of the crew who would come up to me and just say, so I've had this experience. Can I talk to you? I'm like, this is why I'm here. I'm here to talk people through, to explain the things that have happened to them and to give them advice moving forward. You know? So I felt like, I was there to do, I did what God called me there to do. 
you know, do I want to have my, my segment come out in season two? Yes, because that would be fun because then I can actually show people what I did. You know, all the friends and family and fans were like, what's going on? What We know you're doing something, but we don't know what it is, you know? So I've been like, you know, I can't tell you, can't talk about it. You know, so it'd be nice that that was out. So that's how I came to that show. Um, and I think I did a good job not mentioning names. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's tough. So and okay. I'll move and I'll move on off it. But I uh, like, you know, here we are in this. Uh, uh, I'm surprised the show was able even to get off. I, I went there thoroughly convinced, especially after my first night in the hotel room, my hotel room, what happened to me. And I was walking around. I, I was grabbed, something grabbed my ankles and flipped me onto my face in the shower. And I landed awkwardly on my right knee and, the, and no one could tell in my, I don't, I don't think they could tell, but no one could tell that my right knee was like twice its normal size in my wow. slacks that I was wearing. And I was trying not to walk around with a limp because I didn't want them to send me to the doctor. And then for some reason, me not be able to finish what I came there to do. Um, but uh, here we are in this almost 200 year old church. And I was seen, I, correct me if I've got the wrong person here, but if I remember correctly, and I could be totally wrong, you're also a little psychically gifted, aren't you? Uh, I would never say that of myself, but sensitive though, very it. sensitive. And yes. you see, you've seen things. Oh, I, I see angels and demons constantly. Well, talk so. to me about we're here. We are in this and I didn't want, you know, lots of people. Yes. There were times where you see me like this on set and I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cause I don't, I don't travel well and I don't sleep well and I didn't sleep hardly at all in the hotel room. So I was dozing off a lot on the set. I felt bad about that. But many times during people telling their stories, I'm like that because I'm praying because there's there were things going on. And I already knew I saw you talking to a lot of people on the set. I knew there were some people that were freaked out. I mm -hmm. knew there were things going on. I didn't want to freak anybody else out more than they were already freaked out. But was I alone in that or were you seeing and experiencing things in that church, too? Oh, yeah. I mean, the first thing I did on the first morning is I, I was I was chomping at the bit and I'm like, and I kept telling the director, I'm like, you've got to let me inside because I've got to bless this place before we start. I've got to clear it, you know, and he's like, no, we're setting up. And I'm like, oh, let me in, you know, let me in, let me in. Finally, they let me in, you know, and I went around and I actually did a lot to purge what was there, you know, and I went in again the next morning and stuff like that. But yeah, there was all kinds of activity. And I know there's a lot of activity in the church. There's a lot of activity in the hotel. I was irritated that people weren't like, I was like, you know, call me. I don't care if it's 4 a.m. If you're in the hotel and something's going on, I'll just trundle down the hall to your room and we'll deal with it, you know. But it was, um, I know at one point during one of the stories, it was so amazing because uh, several angels showed up, showed up. And one of them tapped me on the shoulder and said, pay attention to the story that you're about to hear. I'm like, duly noted and listening, you know, <laughs> I stopped talking to the people around me and I just, you know, paid attention and took what I could from it, which was great. And um, it was, it was a fascinating, fascinating shoot. And like I said, I was praying. If I wasn't talking to a crew member, I was praying and I was working my tail off out there in the pews. <laughs> well, you know, everybody was on pins and needles waiting. You know, we were all told that it was going to come out uh, November of this year. And um, so then we got a call uh, right about that time um, that they had decided for many, many really valid reasons, which I think work uh, better that way, that they pushed it back to uh, October of 2023. So um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, but like, I, I just want you to know that for me to you, heartfelt thank you to everything you did there and that uh you're not forgotten and mm -hmm. i'm proud of you I'm, I'm proud to call you a friend i'm proud to know you i'm proud to have listened <clears throat> excuse me to your story and to watch you just be you and and do what you do while we were there and we haven't heard the, that whole situation hasn't heard the last of you and so um uh, i can't wait until um until you uh are really just uh, 
brought into the uh, into uh, all of that whole happening thing. But uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, how did that fall? How did that happen for you? Uh, you know, it's not every day you meet somebody who's a gifted exorcist. You know, I know priests that are that could be. I mean, I know priests that I know have uh, an off the charts, uncanny discernment for this kind of stuff, but they won't they won't do it. That's they for whatever reason um, they just that's not their they don't feel it's their calling and they stay away from that um so a lot a lot of people even that they know you know this stuff is uh this is the path that they're supposed to be on uh get off the path understandably so but how did i saw your wonderful page uh debbie for gay ministries talk to me about that and how you started doing that well it it really started when i was four (laughs) And um, I was in the the library at the at our house um, one morning trying to pick out a book to read while I was waiting for my parents to get up, and I was just sitting there looking at the books, all, all the picture books and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, there was um, there was a, a demon. It was a fallen angel who was next to me, and he stroked my hair and called me by name. And I jumped up and sprinted to the family room and stayed there until my mom got up and uh, talk to her about what happened. And she tried her hardest to come up with any explanation that wasn't that, you know? And, uh, and what it taught me, unfortunately, was that when stuff happened, I couldn't talk to anybody about it because no one would believe me. So I actually spent, um, I had a very, very happy childhood during the day. I had, you know, very loving parents, fairly nice, very, you know, nice life. But at night I would get terrorized. You know, so, you know, if I had to get up and go to the bathroom, I would walk the entire way with my eyes closed because otherwise I'd start to see things, you know, appearing in the mirror, you know, and and things would, you know, try to grab me in the middle of the night. You know, it was it was bad. But I, you know, talked to God. I did a lot of talking to God. I did a lot of Bible reading and just trying to figure out what to do about it. And slowly over the years, he helped me learn how to fight back until I was 16. And I was having a conversation with my mom one day and she's like, something really weird happened to me and I think you might know how to help me. And I'm like, mom, what, what, what are you talking about? And she's like, I know, you know, what's going on. And I'm like, and what's funny is we didn't actually discuss that day in the library when I was a kid until, you know, from that day, we never discussed it again until two years ago. And I don't even know, we were talking about something completely unrelated. And for whatever reason I brought, I said, do you remember that day when I was four? She's like, and you, and the demon talked to you in the library. And I'm like, you knew what happened. And she said, I knew that day what happened, but I knew, I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know anybody who'd ever had an experience and I didn't want you to grow up afraid. So I tried to make you think it wasn't real. And I'm like, well, that kind of backfired on all of us, didn't it? <laughs> you know, but it was such a relief to actually know that she was just doing her best, but that she had believed what happened to me, you know? So it's actually very much influenced how I tell, I have people come to me going, my children are seeing things. And I'm like, well, we can, you know, first thing is children do have active imaginations. They can have imaginary friends. They can make stuff up. I, you know, all that's possible, but you net, you always have to be calm you know, like it's no big deal, but you go and check. If they say there's a monster under the bed, you go and check. If they say there's something in the closet, you go and check because that gives them confidence that A, they're being listened to and B, you can show them how to take care of it themselves. And if you can get them at that young age, you change them from terrorized, victimized people to warriors for God, you know, because children are very sensitive and they see this stuff more than adults do usually because adults have managed to close their mind. But yet the funny thing I have found, the more I open up and the more I talk about it is I have yet to meet someone who hasn't had an experience. The thing that happened to them when they were in college, the thing that happened to them when they were 12, the thing that happened to them, you know, two years ago that oftentimes they haven't even told their spouse, you know, and they're like, this thing happened to me and I don't know what it meant. And I, but they, they've never been able to let it go, but they won't admit what happened to them. And I'm like, well, you had a demonic encounter, 
you know, something dark brushed against you, you noticed it scared you and you've tried to deny it, ignore it, pretend it didn't happen, but it's never really left you, has it? Because you still have that thought. So that's part of my ministry too, is, is making people aware that this is so much more common than people think. Yeah. Because what the darkness does, what demons do is they try to isolate us. They try to make us afraid. They try to make us think we're the only ones ever who have had this problem so that we don't talk about it. We don't reach out for help. We don't find the community we need. And that's how they get you. They isolate you, they terrify you, and they keep you in the dark. And that's why we have to bring it everything into the light, show people that this is a normal part of the supernatural world around us. This is a normal part of our spirituality. And for fact, for people who say, you know, who are really active, you know, who say I've never, you know, in the church or who are very spiritual, who say I've never had an encounter with the demonic. My response is either you're not paying attention or you're not a threat. And that should scare you even more. Because if you're doing what God wants you to do, if you're following the path he wants you to follow, sooner or later, you're going to attract attention. Because the goal of any demon anywhere is to keep you from living your best God-given life and helping the world and helping those around you. Sorry, soapbox, soapbox over. No, God bless you. That's well said. And uh, you, you bringing up kids, usually when I go into these cases, I will get the my initial, you know, interviews and walkthroughs with Sharon and our, for our initial investigation, trying just seeing what we may see or feeling what we may feel. Uh, I usually get all animals and children out of the home because I don't do religious provocation. And just the fact that my wife and I show up is provocation enough. And it's like poking the bear. And if they do decide to lash out, they always go after the kids and the animals. And I will give kids... <laughs> <laughs> I give them this. I will put in these little squirt guns, and I have a, ba a bag of these. My Mojo Strength uh, Exorcism Holy Water in these little That's squirt awesome. guns, and I tell the kids, keep it by your bed, and when the bad guy shows up at night, you just squirt them with the squirt That is your... awesome. <laughs> See, good job. They seem to like the kids like that. You know, I try yeah. to make it so it's not it's it's scary. They're still scared, and I am scared for them. But um, it's just a little something to just yeah. The try morning, to not, yeah. It, to think that I mean, obviously, you know, yes, get the kids and the animals out because they are the most sensitive. They're going to be messed with the most, you know. But at the same time, to think that they're not impacted. Or that you know, some they're not not seeing stuff or whatever. I mean, that's that's folly, you know. That's why I'm always like, you be calm, you be logical, you explain to them this is a natural part of this. This is a natural part of the world, you know. This happens, and this is how you cope with it, you know. You squirt them with the holy water, <laughs> you know. You invoke the blood of Christ. You tell them to get the heck out of your room, you know. And the more you empower them, the less scary it has to be, you know, and uh, because I'm always like, you know, the last thing you want to do is tell your kids that it's not there, you know, because, because let me tell you, the more, more your whisper, you know, there's nothing there to your kid, the more something shouting in their other ear, look how scary I am and your parents aren't going to protect you, you know. You've heard me talk about a couple of times that that. Uh, I actually left the field uh, for one reason or another because of, you know, a, a case I worked or an incident that I, I, you know, found myself in that didn't end so well for me. In your trials, uh, has any story or case, and if you, if you don't want to share it, that's fine. If you want to share it, the floor is yours. If has anything like that happened to has really shaken our faith is never shaken, but has really shaken your should I continue doing this resolve to the to the bone? Well, it's it's funny because God has been calling me since college to go to go big with a ministry to educate as many people as I can. And I've been fighting him, kicking and screaming the entire time. 
because I'm like, you know, which is why I've, I've helped one person at a time, usually through word of mouth. I, I always joke that occasionally, I occasionally, you know, back in the day, I would get the 3 a.m. phone call on the house phone. And you're like, who's calling me at 3 a.m.? And it's someone <laughs> going, uh, it's a total stranger, but they know somebody who knows me and they're in the middle of a crisis and their friend told them to call me, you know, and I'm like, oh my gosh. But, um, but yeah, it became very, in college, it became more about helping other people than learning how to help myself because I started encountering people who are having really active problems. And so I had to learn to fight for other people. And then, you know, God kept saying, you know, write a book. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. sure. I'm going to do it this year. Sure, I will. You know, <laughs> and then finally it um, came to a head and he's like, I'm serious. I want you to write the book. And um, and this is funny because um, the Fro Frozen, the movie, the Disney movie came out. Right. And I had promised God that week that I was going to write the book and I'd actually sat down and started writing, you know, and I was like, but part of me was not into it. Part of me was like, I don't want to because, you know, the topic still freaks, freaked me out at that point. And I didn't want people to know, you know, because I had managed to fly under the radar so that the majority of my family and friends didn't actually know, you know, uh, which was hard. <laughs> but and I was like, I don't, you know, I just can't. And there's that amazing, amazing, everyone loves Let It Go for their own reasons. But when she was trudging up the mountain and she looked down at her gloved hand and, you know, you know, the whole, you know, you can't let them know. And she rips off the glove and says, well, now they know. And she was completely free in that moment. I'm like, oh, I want that because I have been hiding who I am for so long because I've been hiding what I can do and how I help people for so long. I want that same catharsis. And so I wrote so fast. I wrote that first, that the, my first spiritual warfare book, I finished it in three weeks, you know, cause I was just like plowing through and I had that song on loop the entire time. But then I had the job of sitting down everybody who was a family member or a friend. And I, I went through my list and I'm like, who is important enough to me in my life that I need to tell them before they find out just because the book is out there, you know? And so I had a lot of really rough conversations. You know, I had a rough conversation with my mother-in-law, you know, that was exciting. You know, I had a rough conversation with some new friends we had made that looked like they were going to be really close friends. And that was, you know, another one of those exciting conversations where she was like, okay, I believe you. And he was very much a skeptic, but at the same time, an hour into the conversation, he said, this thing happened to me when I was, you know, a kid. And his wife is looking at him going, who are you? Because they have no secrets between them. They, they overshare with each other, if that is possible. You know, I mean, they are so, every little moment, every little thought they know, and this was something she did not know. And she was shocked, but it's because everyone is afraid. They're afraid to talk about it. They're afraid they're the only one. They're afraid people will think they're crazy. And he told me his story and I'm like, yes, that was a demonic encounter, you know? And uh, it was, but it was interesting. So I finally got the book out there and I'm like, that's a relief, you know? And then God kept pushing. He's like, you need to do the website. You need to start, you know, doing classes, which I'm going to be starting up in the new year. You know, you need to educate more people because you're still reaching one person at a time, even if it, you know, even if it's just through the book. But I have, I mean, I've had some great experiences with the book, which I'm sure you have had with yours and will have with your next one as well, where I've been places where I was um, there because of my fiction. They would have me at a convent, like a science film. I was at a science fiction fantasy convention and a guy came practically running across the room and he, and he like pointed to, you know, uh, he had like a copy, a copy of the book on his phone and he said, is this you? And I'm like, um, yeah, you know, and like I said, in the middle of this, you know, dealer's room for a science fiction convention, he's like, do I have a demon on me right now? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah okay, this is public. Give me a moment. You know? And I'm like, yes. And he's like, okay, tell me where it is so that I know that, you know, cause he already knew where it was and he knew how he'd been cursed. And he's like, tell me about it so that I know you're legit. And I'm like, this is awkward, but I did, you know, and I was, I was 
there for one thing and I ended up get tagged for the other, you know, which I'm sure happens to you too. You're like, oh, I can't get away from it. But, you know, so God has been constantly pulling me to go bigger and bigger. I mean, I've seen where he wants me to go and I'm in a better place to actually say yes to that right now than I ever have been because it's all about, you know, it's all about letting go of the fear. First, I had to let go of the fear of, of the demonic. And then I had to let go of the fear of talking about it with other people. And then I had to let go of the fear of actually going to the place he wants me to go and being more really, really public about it. And, you know, just whether or not I end up on the TV show or not, that going out and filming was the first step in that. There's, there's, there's things that's, that's what I get. The feelings I get is that there's, there's big plans for you and you're going to be a part of it. You're already a part of it. You. Um, you left such a wonderful impression on so many people there that um, you're going to be a part of it. Um, I think for me, speaking for myself, I don't want to speak for you, but I, I think what we do, one of the hardest things for me is that uh, how ugly some of the stories are that come your way, because the, most of the time these things have, you know, they feel they've been given permission to enter these people's lives and attach and you know you from incest to child molestation in the home uh, things like that and then you mentioned college students and i only was ever approached by one college student and to make money to continue to go to, to pay her tuition to college she was an adult film star oh my gosh um so here's here's my thing about the invitation and I saw two cool things on your Facebook page the other day. And I, I learned something new every day. And I learned something new from you. I go into a lot of these cases looking for signs of devil worship, Satanism, the occult. And you had a wonderful article, two articles, one about the pentagram. And I always look for signs of a pentagram with the, the top point down. Mm -hmm. um, and I also worked one case where I walked in with a pastor and this woman, she could have, her home could have been a store where people go to buy Halloween gifts. That's how into Halloween she was. And the first thing the pastor said was, this is why this is happening to her, all of this stuff. So I want, I know how I'm a big Halloween fan. I know you are a big Halloween fan. Talk about um, the whole invitation thing, starting with, I didn't know the pentagram, what it right side up, what it originally stood for. I did not know that. So talk about that and then talk about um, Halloween and things we should be careful of and to not invite these types of things into your life. Absolutely. Well, the pentagram, like the, um, the fish, was a symbol for Christ back in the early church. You know, you wanted to say, hey, I'm a Christian. You drew the pentagram because it represented the five wounds, the head, the hands, the feet, you know, it was the five wounds of Christ. That was a pentagram. They started flipping it upside down around 1920, 1930 to be an offense to Christ, you know, to be an offense to Christians. And uh, for some reason, people started seeing all pentagrams as evil because of that. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's, it's just like when you see an inverted cross, the right side up cross is Jesus. The upside down cross is not. Although I always tell people, no, that's St. Peter. Exactly. Uh, that's what it, I'm starting to get. I'm starting to get upset about that too. You know, <laughs> but I'm like, okay, come on. But yeah, you, you want to disrespect St. Peter who, who was very, he was, he had to be crucified upside down. I mean, that's what we should be looking at. I feel like I, I'm a huge celebrant of Halloween and people have asked me for so long, you know, why? And I'm like, A, I love dressing up. I love having fun. I love, you know, the costumes, the parties, the candy. You know, I love all of the, the trap, the American trappings of Halloween, right? But on a very visceral level, it's the one night of the year where everyone pretends to believe in the supernatural. For me as a child, given that I was living the supernatural every day, it was so nice that everyone else was at least acting like it existed, even if they didn't believe it. It was felt like the one night of the year that I wasn't alone, you know? 
And, uh, and I know Satan at one point tried to scare me about, you know, on Halloween night and he tried a couple of years in a row. And then my mom actually helped me get over that one. Um, you know, and she's like, we just, if you're having bad nightmares, we pray about it. You know, I'm like, okay, that's awesome. That's good advice, mom, which was great advice. But, you know, I, and I, I get upset because people, there are, there are things in this life that are right and they're wrong. You know, that I think all of us can pretty much agree on, right? And, you know, they're very biblical oftentimes, but then there are so many shades of gray, you know, and the, you know, the Apostle Paul talked about, you know, how some things are are wrong for some people and not for another, the weaker and less, you know, the weaker and stronger brother argument, right? And how if you, if you're okay with some of these things, it's fine for you, but don't, you know, try to lead your other brethren into, you know, into the wrong for them. But at the same time, those who don't believe, like you say, and celebrate Halloween, shouldn't be condemning those of us who are okay with it. Where you start to actually invite things in is when you're actually trying to, to interact with spirits, like the Ouija board. You know, anytime I see someone, even every time I even see a Ouija board or like a blanket with a Ouija board on it in a store, it's like my hackles go up and I'm like, how can I destroy it? And I'm like, okay, can't destroy store property. You know, <laughs> that's not going to go over well, you know, but I just, I get so angry because I know people that that was their entree to being completely tormented and nearly possessed, you know, because you're playing, you're, you're basically asking a spirit to come into your life and talk to you, you know, and that is the open door invitation, yep. you know, and it's, it's not, it's not cool. You know, and it's not, cool. it's not a game, you know, and it just, it, it irritates me that it gets sold that way. And also, you know, there are other stupid things people do, you know, they, they see, you know, magic, you know, spells or different things online and they think it'd be fun or cool to try it. It's not, you know, and even if you talk about like the differences between um, like, like people who are actually practice Wicca. What, true Wiccans, you know, what they're doing, they're, they're basically practicing an earth-based religion, like a Native American religion, you know, that's, you know, and the things they are doing are all about love and light. And there's never anything about trying to curse people or trying to do anything for personal gain and stuff like that. And the moment, moment you start dabbling in that stuff, you're in serious trouble. You know, you never want to want to try to put a spell on somebody else, you know, and, Absolutely. Yeah. you know, and, and you just, it, it's not, I mean, it's, it's funny, but like, there's a, there's a donut store that I actually like that has expanded out here uh, called Voodoo Donut. And they make <laughs> these donuts. They're shaped like people and they're jelly filled, red jelly filled donut. And you get a little pretzel stick and you go, eh, 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 and you get to stab them like it's a voodoo doll. Right. It's funny. I, I like them. And they make me laugh, but at the same time, in the back of my mind, I'm aware of people's intentionalities, and you can you can in you can curse people when you're not intending to. You can do bad things to other people or invite havoc into your own life when you're screwing around with stuff like that because you think it's funny, you know. And so even then, I've got I got a little pretzel stick, and I'm like, and I sit there. And I'm very careful that I'm just stabbing the donut and I am never, ever thinking that that donut is any specific person, you know? So I've been on Nutrisystem for a year and I'm you did it to me. I'm going to be thinking about donuts all night now. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> they sound yeah. so good. Oh my gosh. If, if it helps, I'm going to be thinking about donuts all night. Don't <laughs> I've got about, I got a couple of minutes before I have to say goodbye to you. Um, real quick, did you have fun when you come back? Oh, totally. You know who I'd like you to come back with? Who? I stalked your husband because <gasps> when I saw on your Facebook page who you were married to, I go, well, who's this guy that she's married to? Looks like a very interesting gentleman. He's an archaeologist. Um, really interesting looking gentleman. I would like to have the both of you on. That would be very cool. Oh, that would be fun. Um, we did a book well, series together, so that would be even cooler. That, you know what? You and I are psychically connected here because before I say goodbye, I wanted you to plug. If there was one thing you had to plug about all this series that you've written, and that's tough to do writing 
not only a series, but you've written more than one series, all successful. I know you have, you probably have something you want to plug about a series or, or anything. Uh, I think I saw an article on your Facebook page. That you just came out with an announcement for all your fans and followers about uh, something, a project that you're doing. Well, the, the, the new shiny one that I'm super excited about is there are these um, two musical twins, the Harp Twins, who do twin harps, and they are amazing, Camille and Kennerly. They're world famous. They have hundreds of millions of views on YouTube. And uh, we met it five years ago at a convention. And the funny thing is they think it was my idea. I think it was their idea. But we have done a group project where I have written a novel starring fictionalized versions of them. And they have written a music, an album of all original music to go with it. And it is super scary and super spooky. And the music, one of the songs on the album called Catacombs creeps me out because it's all this whispering and everything. And they will not tell me, they will not tell me what it, what they're whispering. They're like, no, it's left to your imagination. I'm like, you guys are brats. But um, the book and the album, we're so excited about Twin Destinies, Blood Song is the name of the book. Uh, just Twin Destinies is the name of the album. And uh, so the two go completely together. Um, you know, it, you don't have a full and complete idea of the story until you've read the book and listened to the music. They tell the same story, but in different ways because of the different mediums and they mesh together so beautifully. I mean, there were songs that they were giving me and I was just bursting into tears going, yes, that's exactly right. You know, so I'm very excited about that one. Good and it just came out, uh, just came out last week. You were so talented. I'm jealous. Oh, um, I know we're going to work. I know we're going to, you know, you and I are going to be friends forever and yes. um, we're going to, I know we're going to work together again uh, one of these days. Um, what else do I want to say to you? Let me make sure I got all the questions out of the way that your fans wanted to talk about. Uh, <laughs> I did for a change. Yay! I tried to memorize them. I only put like six of them down, and I tried to memorize them so I did, did, didn't have to keep doing this. <laughs> and then I could get the questions out and make them seem like they were mine, but they were actually questions that uh, fans and followers of yours sent in. But, um, oh, my gosh. Let me get through this real quick. Debbie Vigay Ministries, that's a nice Facebook page. And you've got Debbie Vigay author Facebook page. You have Debbie Vigay one word dot com. And Zach's been all over that showing it on the show tonight. And then you have Debbie Vigay book club, also a Facebook page. Yes. You are a busy, busy person. And um, yes. I just I love you and respect you. And I just wish I was there to give you a big hug. Give my best to your husband. We haven't met yet. I but know. I think that that would be really cool to have you on. I love people and their better halves coming on the show with them. Because like I said, I know that I couldn't do what I do and be the man I am without my soulmate behind me. And, and I get that feeling with you and your husband. Well, so we're always a fun duet because, you know, he's science and I'm religion. <laughs> and, um, but what, what we always laugh about is everyone thinks that because you, you know, more lean one more one way than the other means that the other is excluded. He has people who go after him going, how can you be married to an exorcist? And he's like, are, are you saying that the supernatural doesn't exist? Because I've never said that, you know, <laughs> you know, he would never say that, you know. And the irony is, even though, you know, he's got doctorates and he's an archaeologist, I've taken more science classes than he has. You know, so we both are very much a mesh, but everyone sees us black and white. You know, oh, he's the scientist and she's the, you know, she's the crazy exorcist. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, the world is not. That's going to be, that's going to be a good show. Talk to him over dinner tonight about that. And I'll try I'm to so get well. you guys back maybe springtime. That'll be fun. Springtime of next year. I love you. I want you to have a wonderful remainder of your uh, Monday evening. Thanks. And I can't wait till we do this again and just stay blessed. Okay. You too. And have a very, very Merry Christmas if I don't talk to you before then. Absolutely. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Good night, Debbie. Bye-bye. <sighs> wow. 
yeah, I can't wait to have her and her husband back there. Uh, I just get this feeling. Just trust me. I get these feelings that that the, <laughs> it'll be really cool to have them both on. Um, there's so much more I could tell you guys. And I wanted to talk to her about this, about Robert's request. Um, question that he had about seeing the ghost of the nun. And, uh, uh, and I've been thinking about that a lot, too. Um, Robert seeing the apparition of a nun. My suspicion is that it is truly the apparition of a, a nun. I bet you he's going to get back to me and find out that his... A lot of people forget these minor little things when they talk to me. Like, oh yeah, my house used to be a church. So he's either on some old church grounds where some priests and nuns have been buried. Um, or nearby. Or that whole area. So if there was a lot of old churches in his area right there that aren't there any longer. Uh, I believe that's all tied in, but my vibe is that I'm not getting the spidey senses that it's a bad thing, Robert, if you're still watching, but keep me in, informed, keep me uh, posted on how all that's going. Okay, guys, I want to um, community pay it forward. Dot us community pay it forward. Dot us go there. Find a good cause to donate something to, even if it's a dollar, 50 cents. Donate to something. Um, a lot of cool things there to see. My church is usocc.org, www.usocc.org. For those of you that want to know a little bit about my church and um, why I got the calling to go into the United States Old Catholic Church Seminary, which is a blast, hard, but a blast. Also, uh, go to bishopjameslong.com, bishopjameslong.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the home page. You'll see the link for Spreaker that takes you to night prayer every night, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific. It's only about 15 minutes long, but it's really cool. Great way to end your day, night prayer with us. You can sign in to the chat room and put your prayer requests there, and we will offer prayer up for you live there during night prayer. Um, there's also a link to his YouTube channel where you can see Wednesday afternoons at 5 p.m. Pacific, Sunday afternoons at 5 p.m. Pacific Bible study. Now that's about two hours long, but that is a really, really cool time. And it, you can either watch it at his YouTube channel or if you're on Facebook like you are now watching the show, uh, go to his one of his Facebook. He's got many Facebook pages. He's always got the link to Bible study on there on Wednesdays and Sundays. So that's very cool. I want to thank my co-producers, Zach and Adrian Clayton. I couldn't do the show without them because I'm totally computer illiterate. So thank you to the two of them. Thank you to Things Network. Thank you to Temple of Phoenix Rising Entertainment. Thank you to Skeleton Key Network. Thank you to Pact, Little P, A-C-T, Podcasting for All Coming Together channel for all of them simulcasting my show. God bless each and every one of them. I will be back this Friday with an all-new show. Oh, you guys are in for it. She's probably my most requested guest to come back. Dr. Joy Pugh will be here this Friday, December 9th. Um, get ready. That's all I have to say. It is bad joke time. I'm going to pull a bad joke that one of you sent in out of this haunted carnival barker hat. It's my poor attempt to put a smile on everybody's face before I say good night. Which, <laughs> I love this. Which knight invented King Arthur's round table? Circumference. Good night, Danny. Good night, Jack. Good night, dog. Good night, Harold. Rest in peace. Good night, Ernie. Good night, Bill. Good night, Dan. God bless each and every one of you. I love you all. Peace. <laughs>